So just a quick video today to talk about what form data objects are. Now this was added as a way for people to bundle data to send it off to the server. As it became more and more common for people to not actually write an HTML form with the form tag and the action and submit that to the server, it became more common for people to start writing JavaScript objects and then you do your XML HTTP request or your fetch call to the server and you're sending the data that way. They needed a common way to bundle that information. So that's what the form data object is. It's sort of a, a replication of what a form does. Think of it as an array of arrays. Inside the array, there is one array for each one of the elements that you want to send to the server. The arrays that are inside have two things, a name and a value. So the way we use it is we create a form data object. With the form data object, we can call the append method. This lets us add name, value, name, value, name, value. You can put whatever you like inside of there, anything that you would have inside of uh, an HTML form that you want to send to the server, you can do that with a form data. Even a file, if you had a file object, you can do form data dot append. And then you can see here in the uh, code complete, there's the name, there's the value, and then blob right here. This would be the blob object. So the file that you're actually going to upload would be right here. And uh, the value can be string or blob. For most things, it's string, but when you want to upload a file, it's a blob, a binary large object. And then there's this optional final parameter called file name. That is the name that you want to call the file. When it gets sent to the server, what's the server going to think this file is called? Okay, so that is how you would add a file into a form data object. But just to show that it is basically an array, uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking the form data object, which is an iterable object, and that means that we can, if I uncomment this as well, we can convert a form data object into an array because the array from method allows us to pass any iterable object, and we can use for of loops with form data objects because they are also iterable. So here we are. Here's the array from. You can see I got an array that had three things, and each one of the things in the array, that might be a little small for you, so let me zoom in here. There we go. So the first one was an array with three arrays inside of it. Each one of the arrays is a name and a value pair. That's all it is. And then here I am going through the for of loop, and you can see that each one of the times I go through the loop, I get the pair. So that's what a form data object is. You want to write one out to the page. I have a pre-tag here, a pre-formatted HTML tag. So I'm going to call json.stringify. I'm going to convert my form data object into an array, and then I'm going to pass that array to the JSON stringify method, and we can do how many indents and tab characters I want to use on the page. So if I save this, this is what's going to happen. Inside the pre-tag, it's writing my array out in a nice pretty format that's easy to read. Uh, if you did at some point want to send it to the server, that's what the code in the comments here is for. You create a URL to pass to your fetch object, but if you want to send the form data along with it, you would create a request object, put your URL, and put your form data object inside there as the value for the body property. Then that request object gets sent through the fetch off to the server, just like a normal fetch. Okay, so that is what a form data object is. It's just an array-like iterable structure that holds a bunch of name value pairs and potentially a form, uh, sorry, a file. All right, that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I will leave a copy of this code as a code gist link in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.